All right, coming up in just a matter of days now, December 8th, it will be the lightweight title on the line in the UFC. Benson Henderson defending that title against Nate Diaz, the challenger who has only been stopped one time, one time in his career, joins us from Lodi, California at Caesar Gracie's gym. Nate, welcome in. We take a look first off there. There's the matchup. There, we got the matchup. It's a good matchup, too. And, and Diaz, by the way, is 3-0 and since moving back to lightweight. That's his weight, you know, and uh, from what I understand also, it, it, you, I, we hear it's all about the diet. Is that true, Nate? Yeah, I try to keep a, a good diet year-round, so um, I'm getting closer to the fight, so I'm on pretty much a raw vegan diet all the way uh, about a month out. Well, wow. Nate, I remember talking to your brother, and, and he follows a similar routine. Uh, he said that that way you don't have to worry about making any kind of drastic cuts. So I'm guessing your weight is pretty much the way you want it, and it's not going <clears> to <throat> have to be any kind of big cut for you to get this uh, title shot. Yeah, well, making weight any, for any weight sucks, but, um, yeah, I try to get as close as possible. So I think I'm all right there. <laughs> Good. Fighting a guy like Benson Henderson, who's going to try to neutralize you. I mean, you got a lot of wins by submission. You got wins by knockout. For some reason, it feels to me like you like to knock people out. But, you know, a great submission victory is great as well. What is the biggest danger he's going to give you? Um, well, he, he's well-rounded. He's tough everywhere. So uh, I'm just trying to prepare the best I can for... Uh, for anything he's got. Uh, he's, he's got really strong wrestling, and um, he's real, got good kickboxing, so he, he's a dangerous opponent, so I'm just trying to be ready for him. Nate, we, just take, we, we were taking a look here in the studio as you were talking of your boxing skills. Uh, do, you feel it, do you feel it's going to be a fight where you're going to be more comfortable on your feet? That would be some people's thought about that, or are you going to be comfortable if it goes to the ground? Uh, like I said, I'm going to try to prepare everywhere. I've been training with, a lot with Jake and uh, um, my brother Nick and a lot of good wrestlers have been coming in. Cron Gracie came out and helped me out a lot. He was here for, for a week and uh, we worked out every day. So I'm real comfortable on the floor. Uh, and uh, I got my boxing coach, Richard Prez, and a lot of good sparring has been coming in and out of here. So I'm trying to prepare. I'm trying to pre prepare for every, every scenario. You, you guys are gym rats. You're always in the gym. What do you do when you come home and you relax? Is that video games? You like movies? Well, what is something you like to do to relax? Uh, it's crazy because I like, I train really hard for fight, for the fight, and um, usually I, you kind of get almost burnt out and sick of, sick of training because you got to be training because it's a job now, you know, and then I, I think all these things I'm going to do, go to relaxation, go on a vacation or something or do something. And usually when I get done with a fight, I'm in such good shape. I just end up gaining a bunch of weight after the fight and training all day anyway. <laughs> so pretty much hobby also. Well, one thing that, uh, you know, when Nate, when Nate shows up, we know he's going to show up. Let's take a look at this graphic first. It's Nate bonuses. And he's among the all-time leaders in the UFC. He's actually the youngest in the group. He's had a total of 10 fight night bonuses already. I mean, that puts him in some pretty good company. And I would imagine you take a lot of pride in that, Nate. I mean, when you show up, you're going to put on a show. You're going to fight, and that's, uh, that's just the way your style is. Yeah, well, it kind of just it happens that way. I think I train hard. I train with a good team. And... Um, it's just kind of like I train. I train that way, so how, I guess it shows. I don't know. <laughs> well, you, you you got five uh, fight of the night. You got five submission uh, of the night bonuses. It, are you looking for a knockout of the night? I mean, this will be the fight. If you can cement one like that in the title fight, that will be unbelievable. Yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> I'm uh. I'm trying, I'm trying to go out there and win, so whatever whatever comes with it will be great. Nate, usually the thinking is that when you take on a champion, uh, you always have to be a little 
uh, leery about going the distance and having a decision. Usually, usually, uh, if it's a close fight, the favor goes to the champion. Do you think like that, that this is a fight that you've got to put away to obviously make sure there's no question who wins? Yeah, I don't think uh, anybody on my team, or I don't want to say that, I don't think that I got a chance to win in any type of decision, so I got to go out there and do what I could do. I'm trying to finish my opponent, try to take, <clears throat> be the better fighter and uh, win the fight, but um, either way, if it goes to decision, I'm going to try to be the one out scoring and out, out pointing on doing him. I imagine that might go back to Nick's fight against Condit when you said that uh, you don't expect you're going to get a decision going your way. Yeah, they don't, they don't, um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. <laughs> hey, best wishes, Nate. Thanks for being on. Good luck against Henderson next week. God Thank you very you. much. <clears throat> Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you. Nate Diaz joining us. Yeah. You know, I, I think he's right, not just in this fight and honestly not what's happened in the past with his brother or any of the teammates, but, I mean, that's always been universal in boxing, hasn't it? Yeah. It's been since you were the champion and fought. You almost have to always take it away from the champion. It's hard to win a decision, not that yep. it can't be done, but to win a decision over champion. You yep. agree? No, it is, and, and I think it should be like that. It's funny to see him like this, and in the fight, he'll probably talk way more than he fights in an, than he oh, talks yeah. in an interview. These both guys are really funny also if you start meeting them know know them then you Carmen realize the funny you. guys is there a camera with us yeah. yeah i don't know no i don't think so well oh. hey we're <laughs> back in lodi again oh. caesar gracie joins us of course fame from the gracie fighting team with uh, the diaz brothers and gilbert melendez and jake shields and everybody else hey how about those giants i like your cap there i gotta ask you about that first caesar you know, I'm from the Bay right now, so I got to represent the Bay Area teams, right? Yeah, the Giants won, and uh, they're doing great, so I got to represent them. <laughs> <laughs> Looking good. You're going to be represented again. You got another guy in a championship fight. Of course, we talked to him earlier. Nate Diaz is fighting Benson Henderson. What have you noticed about Nate in this training session uh, that maybe you haven't seen in the past where he's getting ready with the title on the line? You know, there's a lot of pressure, but pre pretty much... Uh, it's just the same as the last fight, I think. Every fight of yours is, is the biggest fight of your life in the sport. It's one of those sports that that's how it is. People remember your last fight. So this fight's the most important fight he's ever had. The fight before now was the most important fight. So not, not too much pressure, but, uh, you know, he's working hard and he, he's going to be ready to go. I, I always wondered, Caesar, because we know they're both talkers, you know, they like to talk smack. Is this something that goes on if they're training? What if they, they're sparring each other? Is there constant smack talk? No, not to each other, you know. Uh, <laughs> they don't do that. And, and, and they don't really uh, talk smack to their training partners. But uh, the great thing about these guys is when you put them in a cage, it's go time. There's no yeah. messing around. It's like the guy across the cage is your mortal enemy. That's how these guys look at fighting. And, you know, you let them do what they, they're going to do. Nick is kind of different. I mean, you know, he, he, like you say, not in camp with you guys. But, you know, he does have a few things to say. He tweeted after George St. Pierre defeated, uh, uh, that it defeated Condit that he's really not that impressed. Uh, here we see it there, the Carlos Condit. He, he said, uh, I'm not impressed by your performance to George St. Pierre. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, you know Nick better than anybody, I think. And uh, I, I don't know. Does, is that going to help him get more fights? Uh, does it matter? Does anybody pay attention? Uh, obviously, he wants to fight GSP someday. Well, someone pays attention because we're talking about it, right? You so got that right. Obviously, people pay attention to what, <laughs> yeah, to what Nick has to say. Um, I, I think he'll look at something like that. I mean, I personally was impressed with George's performance. I thought he, he, he was like just, you know, he went for it, and that was good because a lot of people would criticize, you know, he's such a great athlete and everything. He could kind of coast to wins, and this one he really wanted to make a statement. But um, I think Nick probably went, what he meant was, you know, technically impressed. You know, yeah. that, that's what I'm thinking. Nick, Nick, is a student of the game and, and he's looking at the fights and he's going did that guy technically impress me or not not whether you're a tough guy or anything like that I mean I'm just I don't want to speak too much for Nick but I, I know him pretty well and I think that's what he's he's talking about but uh, he would love that fight and uh, you know obviously Nick will be back or sometime early next year and uh, we're looking for the big fights for him 
How, how is El Nino doing? I hear the, the shoulder is still a problem. Yeah, you know, which has been a problem for us, really. I mean, mostly it's been a problem for uh, Nate Diaz because <gasps> these guys are, are close training partners, these two. They, they uh, all of their fights, they work out, you know, being in the same weight class, they work out a lot together. And we just haven't been able to have Gilbert in that much uh, for, for this fight for uh, Henderson with Nate. And that's that's been a problem for us. Um, uh, so, so you know, unfortunately, you know, it is what it is, and I'd like uh, Gilbert can speak for himself about what's going on and everything, but uh, it's definitely be, been a, a thorn in our side not having Gilbert around to, uh, to train with Nate that much, really. Gilbert's attitude right now, he always has a great attitude, but, you know, this is twice now he's had to miss a fight. Uh, you know, there's all these questions, what's going to happen <clears throat> with Strike Force. Uh, Gilbert's mindset right now as he looks, as he looks forward, because you know he wants to get back in there more than anybody, I'm sure. No, he does. You know, Gilbert up to this point had never really, he, he's not known as a guy that misses fights. You know, he stays healthy. He stays in shape. And uh, this, unfortunately, this is one of those injuries. It was a serious injury. You know, I, I remember I had a shoulder like that yeah. one time and it, it kept me out for eight months of training. And, uh, you know, Gilbert got hurt. And it's the same injury from the first fight. It's not a new injury. And uh, the best thing to do is let it heal. But he's going to come back in 100%. And I think he's going to show people in the UFC that uh, his, I think he's, what, ranked number two or three, something like that. He's going to show people that he has deserved his rankings. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually personally very happy to see him in the UFC. Oh, yeah. I would love to see him in the UFC. As you know, I always put him at number one. You know, what is something that you guys as a team yeah. do? Is, it, is there something more you do, like uh, paintballing, or you guys go out and <laughs> have barbecue? Because you seem to be a team like that, who does stuff like that. I want to see the Diaz brothers paintball. <laughs> 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 Can you imagine the trash talking on that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, no, we don't do paintball. It's just you, you hang out, you know. You kind of you just you have fun together. You go out mm -hmm. if if you're gonna go to a. You know, we don't do a lot of clubbing or anything like that, I, but but if you're going to go to a club, you hang out with your, your, your homies, if you will. You know, that's what they call it. But, uh, you know, do things. You eat together. You hang out together. You talk together. It's just, it's just a really good bond that these guys have developed over many years of being training partners. I want to ask you quickly. Nate said something kind of interesting. I asked him if he thought he had to finish off the fight against Henderson. And uh, basically, uh, you know, to paraphrase a little bit, he thought he probably did. He wasn't excited about if it goes to a decision and kind of alluded to Nick's losing mm -hmm. his decision with Condit. Is that kind of a camp mindset now? We got to prove things. We're not going to worry about judges. We're going to end our fights. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, pretty much it is. You know, we, it's almost like in, in Nick's case, he figures he's, he's fighting his opponent and he's fighting the judges almost. So he's got he's to finish people. And, and that's, these guys fight like that anyways. And, and you know, they're, they're going to fight their hearts out uh, for, for the team, for themselves, um, and, and for the fans. So that's not going to change. And end of the day, I think that's what we all respect so much about these guys. So, yeah, unfortunately, you know, it's, it's like we got we to gotta get those finishes and, uh, you know, or, or maybe win something so lopsided that we get a decision. We saw that with, uh, with uh, B.J. Penn. You know, I, I've never really seen a close decision where the nod was given to the Diaz's. I always see them. If it's close, they're going to lose. And, and I, I don't know why. You know, I think maybe the judges really don't care for them that much. You know, they're, they're, they're bra brash. And, uh, and I, I really don't know. But for whatever it is, you know, end of the day, the, the fans, the fans know who win fights, and, and the fans are the ones that, that love to see <clears throat> these guys fight. Caesar, always a pleasure to catch up. We must do it again soon. And if you all ever go paintballing, okay. let us know. We'll watch it from a distance at least. No, no, me. I'm, I'm shooting with you guys. Uh, <laughs> boss will be there. <laughs> Thanks, Caesar. I know Boss will be there. Thank yeah. you, my guys, so much. Take care. God all right. Speed, brother. Caesar Gracie. <laughs> Yeah, I always admire his, I like the candor, don't you? Great. He lays it out like that's it is. Yeah, that's the way it is, you know, and he's always been like that. Great guy. My wife even met him for the first time, and she said, oh, he, he was a very nice guy. I said, he's a crazy. All right.